I chose my presentation to read the three sisters and uh, uh, because of probably uh, my involvement in the library and information science profession at different capacities uh, as, for instance, uh, teaching and learning, um, research, uh, and as a library user, I've been a library user for uh, quite a number of years, and also administrator being, as mentioned, uh, heading different library university units, uh, which involved things, among others, curriculum development. Um, the, uh, the, the issue of uh, information literacy, uh, as we know it, is, uh, is uh, I would put it that way, that information literacy has become a buzzword internationally beyond libraries and beyond library and information sciences. Uh, you'll hear us talk about information literacy at uh, international level, United Nations level like UNESCO, uh, International Federation Library Association institutions, IFLA for instance, you'll hear those uh, talk, talk about that. The World Summit of Information Society has talked about information literacy. And uh, we've also, uh, if you look at the seven areas of uh, sustainable development goals and education, for instance, you notice that uh, information literacy uh, comes out strongly in that uh, in that area. Um, we we have a regular international conference on information literacy or international conference on information literacy. Uh, there was one go one going on in Europe, which goes on uh, uh, in annually. And uh, recently we had a chapter, African chapter, of it, uh, international conference in front literacy at the University of Northwest, uh, uh, where I think uh, some of us probably participated. Um, so I was also I was um, I was actually I very much encouraged to notice that uh, at an institutional level at uh, Cape Peninsula University of Technology, we also have uh, information literacy. Uh, championed by uh, Professor Chiware, and that is quite important. Um, there, since Paul uh, uh, Sikorsky, 1974, they pronounced the term information literacy, uh, it has actually uh, uh, ex expanded ex extensively as a, a buzzword, I'd say, beyond libraries. And uh, we will hear it now in other disciplines as well. Um, also, the development of information communication technologies have brought in new literacies that are linked, either linked or have formed components of information literacy to a large extent. And you'll notice them when in my uh, coming uh, uh, slides. Um, I, I think information literacy is being recognized mostly because of two major reasons. One, which is widely known, is that information literacy is fundamental for lifelong learning. Everybody talks about that. And two, which is uh, rather silent, is that information literacy is a human right. It is a right. It's a human right. It's one component of what called social justice. Access and use and success. Access and success. Accessing information and succeeding in using information effectively for lifelong learning. I think that that's very fundamental. Those two I, I notice are some of the most reason, important reasons why information literacy is becoming a very popular thing. Um, libraries, research, and teaching and learning are Daddy, poised to play no... are poised to play a fundamental role. No presentation in in the development of libraries. And I'm going to move ahead, don't worry. I'm just trying to conceptualize the whole thing before I move ahead. You know, if, when you have a whole hour to talk, if I had a 20 minutes, probably I would move much faster. If you've got a 20 hours to talk, uh, one hour to talk, you you have to relax, you know, you, you, you I don't have to hurry. <laughs> so don't worry about that. I'm coming to that, my, my, my presentation, don't worry about that. Uh, <laughs> Um, sorry, um, so um, I, I'm just giving you that background to understand where we're coming from, to understand that uh, libraries, research, 
education. Those are the three sisters I'm talking about are poised to play a fundamental role in the development of information literacy. Now, I, I think that's where I'm coming from. And having been able to, to I mean, to being a, a library user uh, as, and, and, and so on and so forth. Now, let me come to second slide. Now I'm here, I'm here, I'm going ahead. Uh, don't be worried. I think somebody will have to alert me uh, probably at 10 o'clock, um, no, so 30 minutes in, in my speech so that I, I move faster if I, I'm going a bit too slowly. Uh, uh, Prof, you will help with that or anybody else who can alert me. I just don't see the time. I don't have a watch here, some to have a watch here, you know, very useless. No, not, not, not very help, not helpful. So I'm going to focus on, it's really important to unpack the concept of information literacy and its purpose. And information literacy components. I'll also just pass through digital literacy, which we, and, and, and data literacy, and bring in the, the three sisters, the partnership between the three sisters, the library, research, and library information science education. In fact, I, I would call it education in search. I would adjust education, uh, research, and libraries are the three sisters um, I want to talk about. And then I will talk about the challenges and then we'll obviously talk about the conclusions. Now, three sisters is, uh, is like, uh, is seen as a, what, call, what you call a, a metaphor. So you look at it as a metaphor. Those who have traveled along the N1 have seen the three sisters. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, mythologies, a lot of uh, stories, a lot of narratives. Uh, wherever I have people in the vehicle, we're traveling. I've come to Cape Town several times on my road, and each time I've got people in the vehicle, they give a different stories about the three sisters. Uh, so look at it as a metaphor. Um, I, I don't think that our relations, the relationship between these three sisters and allies, uh, uh, it's always that straightforward. Uh, there's always a lot of complexities. But I, I, we look at it from the good stories of three sisters. In fact, when I was running through the history of three sisters around the world, every country, every continent has got three sisters, and the interpretation of three sisters are quite different. Some of them are very, very, very mythological, and some of them are quite, quite real, and uh, and 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 are positive relationships. So I would like to see it from mostly, if, if you, wherever you go through it, look at it from the positive sides. Um, so what is information literacy? Um, if you, are there are a number of definitions of uh, information literacy, uh, which you'll find in the literature, and uh, I would like to go through one, which I find more distinct. Uh, there is the ability to identify when information is needed, carry out a specific task, problem solve, cost efficiently search for information, cost efficiently search for information, interpret, analyze, and retrieve necessary information, appraise or evaluate the accuracy and reliability of the information, and observe the ethical use of information sources. I think I like the, I, I wanted to use other definitions, but I found this last part, ethical use of information resources, it's, it's not there in most definitions that I went through. So I find this one a definition by IFLA to be fairly comprehensive. And I know that uh, normally I take this definition from organizations like or institutions, because I've sat in some debates when people are talking about small, small things of uh, uh, adjectives, the pronouns, they, they're battling to get the definition right. So normally most of these international, or I would say inclusive definitions are fairly polished because they've been worked on a team of people and uh, they, they remain fairly authoritative. Within those that setup, I identified on the left hand side, right hand side, what I think would be the components of information literacy. And actually, they're coming with those definitions. One is information seeking. Two, not necessarily in that order, critical thinking and evaluation of information, for instance. Three, information retrieval, research methods, information sources information use and information ethics and also other 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 uh, literacies 
like adult education, if you like. So the other literacy, I'll, I'm going to, with the slide away, I'm going to give you a number of literacies that we, are, we talk about right now. There are quite a number of them. So from those definitions, you can coin, and some of these things are already, uh, sub, some of the, these areas are already subject areas of our, uh, in our curriculums in LI, in, in LI schools. So they are quite linked and related, which may put up, make up that component. So if you look at the purpose of social literacy uh, in the, uh, on the left, uh, uh, down below, uh, there are quite a number of purposes there, which also comes from those definitions. For instance, find, evaluate uh, information from multiple sources. Enable lifelong learning that you talked about. Enable critical thinking and problem solving. Enable self-learning, self-learning, self-determination, independence and freedom. Self-learning is very, very important and self-learning you can do when you are actually informed literate. In fact, due to COVID-19, I learned a lot of things that I never ever would have learned about because I was alone. I didn't have the library around me all the time. We never had some of the privileges that we had out of COVID. And I learned a lot of things if I don't solve a problem, I can't find a solution to a problem. I had to sit and solve it myself because I don't have anybody else to assist me so quickly. Sometimes we use uh, proxies very easily. You want your shoes, oh, a proxy. You want water, proxy. You want food, proxy. And when those people, those proxies are not there, you go to the fridge and you find that you can deal with, get all those things yourself. So sometimes we over depend on proxies. The next time that you become one less, uh, you you lose your freedom. You lose your freedom. So I, I want to emphasize that one because I found it very very interesting. Um, enable responsive and effective use of information. Enable research capacity building and support teaching and learning, and support ethical use of information and prevent plagiarism, fabrication, falsification, and plagiarism. These are some of the taboos or evils that we have in our society at the moment, falsification, publication, and plagiarism among the library enforcement users. So it's important to note that. Now, if you look at it, the other links, for instance, uh, with enforcement literacy, and this is an area which is uh, can also be fairly uh, debatable, not debatable, but um, uh, uh, challenging to, to understand is that Information, this literacy and education, and that's why I was bringing the sister education and literacy education as one of the sisters. And from this point, you see information literacy, computer literacy, analytical uh, uh, thinking literacy, media literacy, civic literacy. In fact, uh, we at one of the conferences we are talking about the silence on civic literacy. People do what, what some, sometimes in school we call it. Uh, uh, I think there's a curriculum in, uh, in the schools they call it. Um, Life education, I think. People do not know the environment, and some of the chaos that we have in the environment right now is happening because people do not understand and appreciate where we are coming from because they don't understand it. And as a result, we have some of the evils that we talk about in our society today. So, civic literacy is very important. We don't seem to talk about it. I want to challenge my, some of my students to do a, a study on civic literacy, civic literacy. Do you know the history of this country, the anthropology of South Africa? The literature of South Africa. Do you know those all those things? Do you know how, how we have come all this way to be where we are, where we are sitting right now? Do we know about that? Do you do you appreciate where our people have come, where we have come from? People don't do that because they don't know, so they just take things uh, from what we have on, on the roadside and run with it. And uh, multimedia literacy. Uh, I had my doctoral students recently uh, defended a doctoral thesis on financial literacy. It was very interesting because I remember one of the examiners were trying to tell us that um, financial literacy is not actually part of information literacy, but they, they are actually, uh, if you look at uh, my previous slide, uh, they, if you look at other, other literacies, they are actually inter, they, 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 they interlink, it's, uh, they over, overlap at some, uh, at some point. The degree we don't know, the degree can be inside or out. Most, it can go in uh, deeper and deeper, it can also be just at slight level but you cannot be able to forget that. And also new, uh, new literacies, um, which I'll, I'll mention to you a bit later on. Now, we, what is digital literacy? Uh, uh, upon digital literacy, somebody's gonna talk about it at some stage, 
but this is a literacy that is competing very much with with, with the with the with the uh, information literacy. I, I said I tend to think that digital literacy is entering deeper and deeper among that among those overlap that we saw earlier. I think this digital literacy is moving deeper and deeper into information literacy. It's not taken over, but it's moving deeper and deeper into information literacy. It will not replace information literacy, but it's, it's going to be an, an important part of information literacy as, as probably we'll realize later when you go through uh, the other stages. Now there are things, some concepts here that are shared with the information literacy, like critical thinking and evaluation, uh, the issues related to if effective, sorry, uh, things like um, uh, the ability to, to find and select information. Um, this is, you know, some of these um, um, conceptual frameworks are designed with different people, different, looking at them different direction, like the one I just shared with you a few minutes ago. So digital literacy is the ability and skill to find. You see, you'll see the overlap of, of definitions. Ability that skill to find, evaluate, utilize, share, and create content using information technologies and the internet. Now, the, the, the issue of enforcement technologies and the internet was not there in the initial definition of enforcement literacy, but you see the technological aspect is now coming in in, uh, in, in digital literacy. And they've got eight, eight components according to this author, uh, which are displayed uh, there. And I would not like to go back into detail. I was very happy to see that somebody is going to talk about this one at some point. So uh, it made my life much easier. I just make a point to that. Now, I talked about frameworks. Uh, I'm always, uh, um, I, I like frameworks, or I would say conceptual and theoretical frameworks on which uh, we build our own thoughts. And uh, enforced literacy um, is, has been declared, I would say, informational knowledge has been declared a fundamental human right and essential social justice component. Um, we look at it first from uh, applied ethics point of view. Uh, we talk about virtue, a deontology or duty, rights, utilitarianism. Now, informational literacy comes in at, at rights level. We talk about human rights. We talk about human rights, informational literacy comes there. The claim, I, well, I won't read that one. I might not read all these things, but I would like to emphasize what rights mean. The, the claim we have towards others not to harm not kill us. This implies that the right I have become the duty of others. In other words, right-based theory propounds that we have some rights merely by virtue of being human. And uh, being human, uh, you know, information literacy is uh, directed to humans, uh, information users, uh, to access and uh, succeed in using information. So that is, uh, that is fundamental. And also, uh, United Nations organization I've mentioned earlier, uh, I've given some few examples there, but I would go back to the right hand, hand side to just read that part. I always like reading that phrase because I, I find it fundamental. Uh, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 19, states that, that everyone has the right for, to freedom of in opinion and expression, that they, this right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive and impart information and ideas through any media and regardless of frontiers. And uh, this is a right, as I mentioned earlier, this is why we say that information liter uh, literacy, one of the reasons why we say information literacy is a fundamental, fundamental human right and an important component of social justice. We cannot talk about social justice if we, if we, do it, if we cannot make people, give the people to, the tool to be able to access and use information and succeed in accessing information. There is one thing to access, access and the other thing to succeed. Um, I would not go into details there um, uh, because most of those areas that I mentioned are emphasizing that particular aspect, and um, I would like to run out of out, out of time. Now, three sisters, three sisters um, I, I, that we are referring to here is again education, research, and libraries. I bring library and social science education because it's part of education. Um, the, common, the common definition of partnership is working together towards a common goal. 
everybody. They talk around uh, all the definitions, but this is what they emphasize. Working together, like a teamwork. To get vict if you're playing soccer, uh, you ask people, why are you playing soccer? They tell you other things, but what do you want in victory? You want to win. You want to win. So you can have uh, several definitions about soccer and uh, the whole thing, but what you want in victory? So partnership or collaboration can be can be can have three forms. One is optimistic, and we need to be careful when you enter partnership. This perhaps the reason why the three the three systems not work sometimes very well. One is optimist, focus on benefits rather than immediate reward or risk. Benefits rather than immediate rewards or risk. Second one is pessimist, pessimist, focus on influence and dominance of parties involved, like resource development theory uh, pro, pro, proposed by some years back in 1978. Now, the second one is opportunistic. The third one is real, realist, focuses on prevailing situation at the time of collaboration, collaborative project. Uh, there are several, several examples there. Now, this is very transactional, transactional. Opportunities, transactional. Sometimes they say the opportunities and trans trans transactional are very closely related. And so some of the issues uh, of partnership surround this, the kind or the form of partnership that we're trying to develop. And some people run away normally when it is too op op optimistic. And transactional, I think, sometimes becomes a bit more flexible because you can say, I give you this, and you give me this, and then you keep on moving. If not, then we part. Now, um, recently we conducted a study, and I think this is the role of the library, uh, and published, uh, I see that is uh, being read so much and cited so much this paper that we published uh, recently on, uh, on uh, readiness of libraries to the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, we pointed out, uh, we picked up three, 23, um, services or trends in in that. And uh, whereas these trends may not look to some as having a relationship with information literacy, uh, there are some. Although information literacy is also coming here on its own, I think you can see that 88% uh, of the institution that we, 26 libraries in the country were investigated. We even got a response from our university's uh, Cape Peninsula University of Technology. And enforcement literacy was mentioned, it appears at eight percent of the of the universities in South Africa actually uh, um, uh, uh, actually are, are involved in with enforcement literacy at in different levels. Some are much higher involved, some are less. But you can see this is a very significant figure, almost reaching ninety percent from all those in, in twenty six universities. But Enforced literacy should not be seen only as a, a, as a standalone thing. And that is where I was, I was referring to those links that you saw before. There are some other components. Those, 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 are, that, those are inter uh, interconnecting to informed literacy that we have to look at uh, as a, uh, at the same time. And if you look at this, robotics, I just want to go through them quickly. Robotics probably is not, you can, you can say yes or no, yes or no if you look at them. Uh, I silent, you don't have to say it loudly. Robotics, has it got anything to do with information literacy? I would probably say no. Uh, library as a publisher. What about user experience? Trying to find out what user's opinion about your library. Social media. Services to differently abled. That's an area which has been fairly neglected. And do we provide enforced literacy to our in the workplace in relationship to physically disabled in our, in our libraries? Do we actually deal with them? Do we focus on them as well? What about ask a librarian? Yeah, this when you ask a librarian, we chat with a librarian. I do chat with a librarian since you COVID. Uh, you know, they said they text you and you, you respond. That was very good service anyway, and it also goes on in the industry. And uh, they can help you actually. They can actually uh, make you enforce more. Uh, there's some enforced literacy they're involved because they take you through some step by step through things that you don't know. What about tutorials, videos that we have on our websites? What about lib guides? Lib guides have become so important, so so important for conveying information literacy. 
reference management tools. Um, reference management tools are very interesting. At, uh, you know, people at my age sometimes are very resistant to change. And my wife, uh, who is uh, until recently was deputy university librarian at my university, uh, was, uh, we talk about Ednot, Mendeleev, and, uh, and the rest. And I didn't want to use them. I, didn't want to use, I wanted to use my own methods. But when I started using them, it was difficult to, to make me use them because uh, I, it was easier for me to use my old methods. But when I started using Endnote and Mendeleev and these other uh, reference management tools, I love them. I love them. They made life very, very easy for me. And you know, some academics normally resist. The more their hair becomes like mine, the more they resist. And I found it very, very interesting. Is that not part of informational literacy? Is that not part of informational literacy? I'm, I, just, I just want to look, look at them. You can tip them. OK. Um, then what about uh, research information services that we provide to the librarians in, in, in very many ways? Information literacy is there. Open scholarship. Do we think about it? What about research data services, like research data management? Uh, that, that area actually has not been dealt with. Uh, it's, you'll see from the other the, the, that it's, it's got 27%. It's got very, very, very few libraries are actually facing it. Uh, digital scholarship, like institutional repositories, you can see where it is. I think that many libraries have it. E catalog, do we know how to, to handle or deal with e catalog? There's both staff and the user, do they know how to deal with it? What about e-resources uh, e like e-books, databases, and, and so on and so forth? Do we know how to deal with them? Borrowing ICTs was interesting that in the USA is, is, is has very high scores. Uh, it was scoring over 7%, over but borrowing ICTs is very low here. Like uh, you come to a library and you want a computer, and there's a place there that you take it and you leave your ID. You want, uh, so you, you can get your... It's an area that's very low here, and those are the, those are the areas that we prove. But that that has, that probably has it's got some elements of informed literacy because uh, you're giving somebody a tool to be able to uh, to succeed. Uh, what about makerspace, group study areas, research commons, and so on and so forth, using one five. So these are some of the areas that you can see the scores out of twenty six libraries in South in South Africa. The scores are allocated to these particular activities, which are could be over and above. Now, if you look at the libraries that were participated, um, your library comes here, you keep uh, a university of technology. Um, in all those activities compared, compared to other universities, they came 61.9% that time. That time. I'm always careful to say that time because I don't know what uh, a professor you are have done since that time. Probably things have gone to 90s. And with the, the able leadership of, the, uh, of, uh, of DVC, uh, probably we have scored much higher than that, but that's where you kept in university. You notice that performance of university, university of technologies was was that that good compared to comprehensive cons, cons, comprehensive university which are, the, which are in red, and uh, uh, what are call the uh, sorry uh, then the, the the what are called the traditional universities are the one in yellow, and you can see that their scores is uh, is very high. Uh, some are scoring 100 percent. Obviously, this data we collect from the websites. So I always talk about web presence of, of library. Libraries have got, got very good web presence because that's how you sell yourself. With This data was collected from the web, and that is probably the limitations. So when we're collecting those trends, we are going through the website, and we pick up any, any trend that, that appears in on that website, and then eventually we found, put down those, those trends together, and we came up to 83. There could be more. And then we start comparing those trends like pub, library as a publisher was only featuring a UCT library, uh, championed by Professor uh, Doctor Doctor Raju. Or you remember that, and the robotic was coming, for instance, from uh, University of Pretoria at that, at that particular time. You remember the Libby story was coming there at that particular time. So those th those are things that uh, now I like these two slides because they give us something as well. The previous one they give us something to work on. Not this one. This one. These comparisons are. Uh, it's not. It was about comparison. But you can see where you are, where where a university is in this particular case. Now, uh, in, front it, in the workplace, uh, we assume that um, uh, this slide is a bit not in a good uh, position very well. Uh, I don't know how to deal with it, but um, I would probably. Uh, uh, I, I think there is. Um, the library has to develop some programs, uh, strategies, uh, 
the first one on is more on strategies. I'm sorry that this slide is coming this particular way. Um, the the strategies, and uh, then uh, in, the, then we got the the programs and activities that libraries should do, plan and put in place. Uh, why is it coming in this particular form? But um, I'll, I'll I'll deal with it. Um, okay, so library has to develop some strategies uh, in the workplace. Uh, they have to set up some programs and activities, and the programs and activities, uh, you know, why, how, uh, the, then they have to also deal with the uh, stakeholders, and stakeholders uh, in, involves the, uh, the, the parent institution, library users, librarians, professional associations, and so on and so forth. And also libraries have got to be involved in uh, organization, uh, what called capacity building, and capacity building will include things like conferences, seminars, and workshops like the seminar that we have here is a, a form of capacity building. And of course, the issue of uh, marketing and promotion. And I always look at uh, web presets. Like right now, if you talk about digital part, we have to look at the web presence of the university, of the university, uh, uh, the university library. Um, now, in our recent research, we talked about the requirements of, uh, of a library in order for the library to fulfill those, uh, those things. The, there are some requirements that we are calling Academic Library 4.0. Smart technologies, smart staff, smart spaces, smart services, smart users, smart leadership, and smart resources. I don't want to go into those details what actually they entail because uh, like smart resources, open, ac accessible, anytime, anywhere, everywhere. Most libraries are running on 24 by 7 now, 24 by 7, virtually. If when the library closes at ten at, at four o'clock or five o'clock, do not think that library is done. Library is working. I can access my library even at midnight. Or anytime I wake up on my way to the fridge, I switch on my computer, go to my library, I go and accessing. Most libraries in South Africa are running on 24 by 7. So don't think that when your library is closed, is that's all that's all. And uh, I'm sure that this library is working for 24 by 7, Professor. Yeah. So these are some of the requirements, and when we had COVID, this became even more, more important. Smart resources, smart services, also anytime, anywhere, everywhere. Smart services mean that you, you can use the, the library anytime. You have your laptop, in your in the hostel, any space that's there on campus, you can actually use the library, and that the internet element comes in on board. That there's possible internet access, enough bandwidth, bandwidth everywhere for you to make that kind of access and smart stuff. I don't want to go there because that, that could be a story we saw and we had a whole story about that, and I don't want to go. Now, the role of research. Now, research, the main role of research, as we know, is knowledge production and dissemination. That is the main role of the dissemination for development. For development. That sums what research is supposed for development. We are not doing it for the sake of it. We're doing it for the sake of develop, development. So if you look at some of the reasons, it could be develop scientific and professional practice, develop creative and analytical and rational thinking and informed decision making. Uh, that opens both in management and among the users. Find solutions challenges that are affecting our society. Confirm or refute hypotheses. Uh, you know some of the known things, what we call the 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 the, the normal, and uh, make them different. Self development and certified curiosity, very common. Self development uh, mandate. Many institutions have got a mission. As a university, we have a mission to do research, and uh, and actually account for that research. But you have to justify why the, your justification of existence. That's why we have university rankings uh, in the country, and uh, we have different. Uh, uh, international rankings of universities in the country to justify that. And the research is used as one of the biggest instruments for that to, to establish how far the university has done. And this brings the issue of recognition of visibility. Uh, we say UCT probably the top university in Africa. Why? Research, because of research and research production and, uh, and dissemination. And also for at individual levels, such as lecturers in the universities, we have for research as one of the key performance areas. I don't know whether the library has got a research as a mandate, but it's now uh, it's interesting. Another study that we collected recently, uh, also 2012 and 2013, one of them was uh, based on data we collect from East Africa and one from Southern Africa. Uh, and the conclusion was uh, that the librarians should actually conduct research and publish. 
that was our conclusion. Uh, I want to read the first one. I don't want to read the second one. We suggest that the promotion of university librarians to senior library positions should be linked to research output and publication as they serve a vibrant academic community whose research requirements and services can best be achieved by a person who not only conduct research, but also disseminate research results through scholarly publications. Now, I think that anybody sitting in the position of senior uh, uh, university librarian, sorry, uh, yeah, librarian position should have a master's degree. Um, my wife is a, is a very interesting example we, we lived with. Uh, when she got involved in research activities, she became a better librarian, better and better librarian. Because if you work in the university community, you understand people. If somebody comes to challenge your question about publishing, and they're asking you a question related to publishing, uh, one of the scholars or university academics comes to you, and you don't conduct research, where can you? Why? Where can I publish? Uh, why should my documents in? Uh, what do you mean by self archiving? What do you mean by electronic uh, uh, e scholarship? Uh, what, how do I deal with publishers? How do I deal with uh, peer reviewers? How do I? How do you? Who? How do I um, uh, increase my my what call my my, my H index and all the rest through metrics, for instance? And you never did the research. It, if if you got a master's degree or at least honors, honors they do research to some extent. You can actually appreciate the journey this person is taking to reach where it is. But if you don't have that one, you don't have a clue what this person talk about. You may just wave him out wave that this is a stubborn user because you don't understand. And that is why many libraries now, in fact, West Africa is very strong. In in Kenya, in Kenya, where I, I uh, my original, my, where I come from, is is now to be a university librarian. I think in most of you must have at least a doctoral degree to to be a university librarian. In, in West Africa, it's a must. You cannot. It's almost impossible to find a Nigerian public university which, uh, whose librarian doesn't have a PhD. And promotion to those levels. I've got a number of students in Nigeria, for instance. Uh, promotion to any, any of the level from senior librarian position and above must be accompanied with master degree and publication track record. Now, when somebody comes to you, in fact, it's, it's interesting for you guys to write, read this article. It's very interesting. To see what's happening there, and uh, and 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 that is one area where I, I, I also uh, uh, no, no, uh, uh, picked up. I, I could talk a lot. You, you get to tell me. You let me know when uh, done thirty minutes. I, I, I want to have some time for the chat because these things are very interesting to me. Uh, th this study was very interesting uh, because it also I thought that people were going to hit me hit us because it was touching on some, and we found that a very small portion proportion it was actually less than twenty five percent. Of, of university, university, university librarians and deputy university librarians do not publish, do not publish, and they are sitting in those positions. And me, as a university library user, and as an academic, I find it very difficult to be served by somebody who does not understand my fate as a librarian. No clue. And then they tell you to either they think that you are stubborn. Or they think about other things because they can't just serve you because they don't have that, and that is that is something that must be inculcated inculcated in work workplace workplace to ensure formally ensure that people that you are recruiting at that level have got at least a master's degree. Is there somebody coming from a librarian position, what they call a librarian position, before you come senior librarian, then you, that is solved for you. That step is solved for you from at, at the interview level. It's sorted. Then now you can now train somebody who is already ready, who can understand when you talk about all other things much, much easier. But if you get somebody who has not done, I'm not trying to under, underrate my colleagues who, are, who don't have it. Some of them are doing excellent work because they do self-learning. There are some people who are doing self-learning and they are quite ahead of, ahead of the game. Sorry, I'll, I'll, I'll run away from there, that area. Now, if you look at this study, uh, um, the top, Keywords on Scopus and list. I always like going through these databases uh, because I found them very neutral uh, to establish the research output, and the subject analysis become very interesting. So, in a recent study that we did uh, between 20, 2007 and 2016, and reported in in that source that I put behind here, we found information literacy to appear several times in uh, library and information science ab uh, abstracts. You can see it's coming fairly high. South Africa, you can ignore on the left hand, uh, right hand side, 
because that's a place the link to South Africa, because this was linked to South Africa. That's where South Africa is coming on top. And if you look at the, the other side, which is Scopus, by the way, uh, in this particular study, we found that out of the, 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 the sample librarians, sorry, information science uh, educators in South Africa, we went through each and every university, put names of the every order, checked them in the system to find out what they do. We found that only 53% uh, publications are covered in Lista. And this, this is a database. Uh, then I was wondering, where do these people publish if Lista, even Lista, Library in Science uh, Technology Abstract is one of the largest uh, database in, in our field. And it covers uh, all those areas. And if you cannot appear there, then where do you, where can we find you? Where are you publishing? Where is this 47% publishing? Are they publishing in uh, Lesser In Touch? Or Keplerian. Now, if you look at the other side, Scopus is a bit more ex exclusive than Lister. And here we found 47% of our academics in South Africa are publishing in Scopus. And if you look at the subject again, subject areas, you notice that information literacy is coming out there very, a very strong, a very strong research area. Don't th don't count, don't look at the count so much. Uh, but of course, the counts helps you to, to, to rank them and you can be able to see that it's coming out there very strongly. Now, again, in, in the summary, we, we find information literacy coming out uh, very, uh, very strongly and there's those links to some of the areas that I mentioned earlier. I don't want to go to those other areas because they are not our concern today. Um, more, even more recently, 2014 and 2021, uh, we looked at library and force science in South Africa. And we wanted to see also in the research areas uh, in, in, in the country. Um, and uh, you can see uh, enforced literacy. If you look at the, the green, I call them green, enforced literacy is coming in there. Uh, it's got a lot of links to other places, to other literacies. And you can see, uh, I think the, the links on, on, I think purple is mostly linking in uh, research, library for science research, and a particular place like article, adult teaching, and so, so, so on and so forth. And uh, the one on green and are uh, linking in literacy and, um, and, uh, and uh, other areas, uh, uh, like most, mostly education. Uh, red is uh, with, with other, um, other link, it's linked in front literacy, so not in front literacy, but importantly, research in library for science and, uh, and those sort of things. I, I want to not talk so much about this area because I, I wanted to make, make to make, talk more about this. Uh, this is a picture, I mean, with, I did what we call the visual, visualization of enforcement literacy uh, in more recently, and uh, you can see the, the links that uh, are, are associated with enforcement literacy. The blue are some of the new areas on the top top right. Are there some of the new areas? The green are uh, the what enforcement literacy are linked with. For instance, uh, linked with male or uh, linked with, uh, let's say, adult and so on and so forth. And in the, the red area is uh, mostly enforced literacy and education. Um, I, I I put in the the the, the table on the right. Uh, I had three tables here. I put uh, this is one of the lowest one and the lowest one is up here in the periphery, periphery in the outskirts. These are new areas that are emerging. These are new areas that are emerging on, the, on this side. Oh, this one even better than my, my one here. Uh, these are the new areas that are emerging. So there's a link, there, there are a number of occurrences of, of uh, enforced literacy in the document, and uh, on the right side, the, the number of links, how many, to, the intensity of links that that particular area has with other areas. And uh, it's very interesting to see uh, uh, that map and uh, and uh, and the relationship that occurs between enforcement literacy and uh, and those areas. Now this is from Scopus. I already mentioned to you that only 47% of the people published there, and uh, uh, not only the 47% is a very large number of people, all the same. Uh, but it can give you the science that we really need from it to see those kind of links that occurs. Uh, so enforcement literacy is a very strong research area uh, in the country, and uh, the new areas here we need to pay attention. These are actually they appear in the periphery. You see them there at the periphery. They they soon will come to the middle. We call co periphery analysis. Things that are at the center, as time goes by, they go to the back. The like computer literacy used to be at the center. It's now going to the back. We, we, we used to talk about computer literacy and internet literacy and that kind of stuff. Now we are talking about social media literacy. We are talking about digital literacy, data literacy. Those are things that might appear in the periphery. And some of them could be here, but they're going to come 
to the center. They're going to come close and their links, the level of links are going to be much, much more intense in the, in the future. Uh, this is some of the literacies that we are talking about. Uh, this I got from Pro Professor Nyancha's uh, recent research, which I think you should read. It's very interesting. I think it's one of the most comprehensive reading I have in my reading list, which you should read. It gives you the evolution of information literacy from 1975 to now. And you can also look at it to see, you can also predict the future, what's going to happen. I, I, I got the, uh, the article about, uh, when I was doing my preparing this presenter, I found it very, very interesting. I read the paper, it's very, very interesting. And uh, I, now these are some of the new literacies. It's got 40 here that are listed, but there are quite a number. And this literacy, the question is, how do we, do we, how do we, um, how do you, do we, um, uh, uh, in, in, incorporate them in our information literacy programs at our institutions. Remember, all of them have, are eating, have got a place in information literacy. They're all coming into information literacy at some point. They've got a, some, 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 the, the interface, the overlap with information literacy at some point. So how do we deal with that? Like data literacy we are talking about now, you see here, you see the trends, it was, if you look at the first 1995, 1990, 1991, 2000, you notice that they were not there. Now that, as you go now to this side, you can see that those are new, new, new literacies from 2011, 2018. Those new literacies are now emerging. They were not there before. Those terms were not even known about before, but they become more intense as we go along. So I would like us to pay attention to these literacies. This is where the future, especially these ones which are here, 2011, 2018 and maybe 2018 to 2022, if you like. They're the ones where they, they, where they, where that's where we're going. The role of library for library science education, I think our role is research. That's the LA schools. Uh, curriculum development, community outreach, like uh, continuous professional development, uh, which we don't do that well anyway, as library schools. Short courses. Do we offer short courses? Partnership with the stakeholders. To what extent do we involve the industry in our activities? Professional associations and LIASA. To what extent do our schools, for instance, get involved with the uh, LIASA and professional associations? I think these days, I think our schools are playing, I think, less uh, active role. I know that the people are reading our, our publications and going to our LI schools, but I think the the when you look at the other conference and the uh, sexual conference recently, you notice that uh, that activity is a bit, we should have done a bit more. And of course, providing our device the services. Now, I'm coming to our library, our library school at Unizulu. Um, I was looking at our curriculum. Uh, and you notice that on the left hand side, we have enforced literacy. And I was seeing, looking at our curriculum and I would say, which courses or modules do we provide in our department which have got linked to information literacy? Uh, normally, we don't think about it. We don't think about the links. From the definition we had and the journey we've done, we've gone through until now, we normally don't think about it. And you can see that the current number of courses that we're offering that have got something to do with information literacy. So somebody passing through our library in science schools and has gone through these courses should be fairly information literate. But they also have considered the new literacies that are coming in. So sometimes we talk to our students, they don't see the link between cataloging and information literacy, for instance, or knowledge, organization of knowledge, or classification, or even research methods. When you are doing literature review, for instance, literature review, literature review is a very enforced literacy intensive work. Very, very intensive, critical thinking, knowing enforced sources, uh, referencing correctly, plagiarism and all the rest. There are a lot of things involved in literature review, for instance, which when students do the do it. So these are things that um, we do offer in our curriculum. And I always say that enforced literacy as a course on its own is, is not enough. We must know that there are some other things that we're offering or we are doing in our environment, which are goes on in enforced literacy. I don't, I, I have this, I'll, and I'll through it a bit much faster. This is a concept that I developed recently. I use it for teaching enforcement seeking to my students and I um, I need to publish it. Uh, we have to put it to 2019, but that's the time I put the PowerPoint uh, to conceptualize, to help the student understand the journey between uh, info seeking and uh, 
and access to information. And on the left hand side, I just want to run through quickly with the, within a minute, or, a minute or, or three, because it's a long story. Uh, is uh, that um, on the on the on the far right is the users uh, that come to our libraries that we need actually to to make information literate. They come in with a need. They come with skills. They come with uh, knowledge. Maybe adequate or not inadequate. Remember, adequate or not adequate. Skills, knowledge, attitude, experience, content, context. Context is the cultural part of it that they come in with. And of course, the issue of exposure to what extent, to what extent they are exposed. And then we we have to. How do we reach them? This group of people from in, in information literacy point of view to make them move them from negative to positive. How do we reach them so that they can be able to access and, and succeed in function searching? Now, the, at the middle, we have the machine interface and the human interface. The human interface are the librarians. Librarians actually are like the users because they're humans. They also come with them. They come with knowledge, skills, attitude, uh, exposure, and so on and so forth. They can also, those knowledge can be negative or positive. Negative, positive is meaning that the person is very knowledgeable. He's got good metacognitive skills, and, uh, and 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 it can also be negative. And we have to work on this as much as well the human aspect here in this in this in this in this uh, uh, in this uh, uh, model. And on top we have the machine interface. Machine also comes on board with speed, storage, hardware, software, maintenance, use of use of readiness, and of course the issue of the software that's used there. Now. We, we, we talked about the fact about digi digital technology. We talk about these new technologies. Machines are becoming playing a very big role. And uh, we have to make people be, become, become, let's say, computer literate, internet literate, social media literate, and so on and so forth, which involve us actually uh, ensuring that those machines are having all these things, components that come with them are, are actually functional. And on the far right, I have the content. Um, when in the library, we always have uh, OPAC there in the, in the system, in the library. That is actually, it looked like near, but also distant because they, uh, it, it, all the records in the library are, are there. But they're also virtual ones that you get when you access different databases. Some of them are, are not, not located within our environment. So I have indicated there, we've got uh, books, periodicals, and then we've got uh, the come reliability of the content, the accuracy, and so on and so forth. And also the issue of the publishing, the mass media, which which are, well, these are areas where or area uh, uh, sources. These I would call them, in other words, sources of information, if you like. They can be centers. They can be actual uh, con uh, uh, content like books, or they can also they come on board with those issues, accuracy, and so on and forth, and so on and so forth. Um, I don't want to. I don't know how much I'm doing the time. Um, um, okay. Okay. Let me round up. Um, I I also worked on something about what what call smart allies education and research for zero. And uh, this one is probably uh, will vocally focus more on what uh, the allies schools do. They look very much with what the library does, but there are the elements here which are not the same. And uh, we also need to be fairly fairly smart in all aspects as uh, as allies say allies uh, uh, users for instance. We need to 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 be uh, research in research uh, things, to curriculum issues, um, of course, is areas of teaching issues, policy issues, and and, and so on and so forth. And of course, our the students themselves should be fairly literate. Now, I I, I I I'm now coming to the to the end, um, for the next five minutes. Uh, we have challenges and opportunities. I did not want to divide challenges and opportunities and say these are challenges and these are opportunities. You just look at them and you, you can always decide on, on your own whether that is a challenge or an opportunity. One is collaboration and partnership. Collaboration and partnership I, I, is not normally very easy. And how is it working for you, for us and for you? Popular, how do we popularization of information literacy, conference seminars and workshops? I think it's going fairly well. Uh, this seminar is an example, but I think we can still do more. And of course, the annual conference that we have. Institutional support uh, for, uh, I, from this university, from early presentation, we had that uh, is already a very, a very uh, 
a, 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 a good institutional support going on, and the presence of the deputy vice chancellor here demonstrate that institutional support is, uh, is is active in this university, which is which is acceptable. And I think many institutions in the country, from the, the other slide I showed you, uh, showing the trends and services, does indicate that those are going on fairly well in many institutions in the country. Research support, how is it going on? What about library support? Uh, I think library support, you could see from other slides. Uh, I don't know whether exactly they are now seven and eight, but um, I added some in some. I think 88% uh, involvement for literacy is already good enough on its own. What about LIS education support? Do you think we library schools are, do, are providing enough support? What about much uh, disciplinarity of informed literacy? In fact, I'm referring that article to read because it gives a very, a very interesting trend of multidisciplinarity of information in literacy. Uh, in that study, we found that 75% uh, of enforcement literacy um, uh, activities are in the social sciences. Computer science, about 25%, is uh, also eating significantly. And it goes all the way even, even to veterinary, veterinary science, which you may think has got nothing completely to do with enforcement literacy. Uh, if you look at uh, that article, which I think you should read, I'll give you a very interesting idea that enforced literacy has become so multidisciplinary that it's not longer at the as in the custodian of the libraries or enforced library schools. So it's gone beyond that. And of course, professional associations, uh, IFLA, LIAS, and so on, support, support do you think is inadequate? Uh, adequate. And capacity building, do you think we're doing enough capacity building? What about the new or emerging literacies? To what extent are there, is this a challenge to us? To what extent have they have they have we integrated them into the enforcement literacy uh, uh, um, acti uh, activities? Uh, I just give you an example of uh, what's gone here um, and the what it happened recently. Like these two conferences, one that we have here and the one that took place recently at the University of North uh, Northwest. Uh, which is uh, very encouraging that uh, some work is being done already. And I'm um, also really appreciate the fact that um, Kenusa University of Technology is on the map as uh, champions of, uh, of enforcement literacy. Uh, what are the conclusions? Whew, it's coming to an end. I know a long story that's like mine, you say, when is it finishing? <laughs> uh, coming to an end, which is good. OK, multidisciplinary of enforced literacy is fundamental for its exploration, understanding, integration, and development as an allies discipline. And we have to also recognize that enforced literacy is closely linked to other literacies. We cannot run with enforced literacy and forget other literacies because they are actually interlinked with our literacy. So it, it depends on which one do you want to invite into our domain. Digital literacy, multimedia literacy, data literacy. To what extent do we want to bring them in? Informed literacy is a human right because it's enabling for success and success. Access and success. To succeed to, uh, to use information. We still feel that library and science schools should play a major role for informed literacy education, both formal and informal. I think what we are doing is not enough, like continuous professional development. Uh, informed literacy should be integrated into library strategic plan. I think it is already here, and uh, from the 88% that we saw earlier, it shows that informed literacy is already integrated into library developed plan, and unit a unit and all section for its coordination and management should be established where it has not been done. And I'm sure that in this uh, university it could be maybe under a research librarian or it could be uh, with that kind of champion, championship that we have in this place. I'm sure that there must be a unit or a, a, a structure within the university and, uh, or either under research or somewhere else where information literacy uh, is, uh, is hosted. Research is essential for information literacy theory and practice and must be encouraged and supported by stakeholders. I think we need to do more research in that particular area and the popularization of enforced literacy to be encouraging. I think web presence, web presence is like lib guides on the, on the websites. Um, 
uh, lip drives, they must prevent presence of information literacy. And of course, we should strive to turn existing uh, challenges uh, into opportunities. I have some readings there and uh, I could add some. Uh, they are not, um, I'm actually, actually done draft write up on this and uh, I think uh, by the end of the end of the month I should have uh, a real document ready which for was shared with other colleagues because I think I, I found it a, it was something that I always think of doing but um, the challenge to work on this area made me I like all of these kind of challenges because they are very interesting for me they make me learn about new things uh, which I would not have some of the literature I looked at, I wouldn't have look, looked at them now because they, are, they were not, the beasts were not chasing me. You know, when the beasts are chasing me, no, no beasts are chasing me at this particular point. <laughs> and uh, at that point, just say, I've finished the university, I've retired, I don't want to see anything, I don't want to, and I don't think I'll live that life, I think I'll die if I, if I just let it go. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>